That is uh, one of my favorite songs. Um, it's, uh, if you've ever read Revelation chapter 4, if you've ever read it, it's right out of Revelation chapter 4. And um, for me personally, it was a, a time when I was really seeking the Lord in prayer, and, and, just, and I got to that passage, and I read through that Revelation chapter 4, and I was left, it was like 6 in the morning, <clears throat> and I was left speechless. I just didn't even know what to say. I couldn't pray. I finally got this picture. And, um, and so I thought, I, I just speechless. And so I thought, what do, and I, oh, well, Jesus taught us how to pray. Father, first word of the Lord's Prayer, Father. And I just, I laughed out loud at like six in the morning. <laughs> and and uh, just because I just, the contrast of what we just sang, holy, 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 clothed in rainbows, and yet we call him Father. You know, isn't that incredible? Amazing. <laughs> uh, this morning we are uh, kind of carrying on. I've been saying carry on in our series in Acts. I feel like we haven't even got there, but, <laughs> but we've been looking really, focusing in on the Holy Spirit because that's, we've been using this phrase, proclaiming the kingdom of God through the gospel by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you're to sum up what is the book of Acts, that's it. And, uh, and from the very beginning, you know, Acts 1.8, Jesus says, and you will be clothed with power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. That's that mission that we've been looking at since I started, right? What's the mission Jesus gave us to be his witnesses where, right where he has us, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, right? And the and book of Acts is just a historical account, real people, really happened, you know, of the people that did exactly that. And so we've been looking at that. We spent a number of weeks on the Holy Spirit. And, and last time we spoke on this, um, we were looking at the gifts of the Holy Spirit from 1 Corinthians 12 through to 14. And it starts with 12.1, uh, the scripture saying, I don't, Paul telling that church, I don't want you to be uninformed about the spiritual gifts. And so I said that was kind of my heart in, in that message. And just I wanted us to be informed as a church about the spiritual gifts. And so um, that's what I tried to kind of share and so here's just kind of a review, um, the uh, kind of a summary verse there, 1 Corinthians 12, 11, all these empowered by one and the same spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills, the gifts. And I like what Lloyd said, like, who doesn't want to receive a gift from God, amen? And we said that last time, like, if God wants to give me a gift, yes and please. And, uh, and then just to kind of summarize, what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? What's their purpose is what we talked about. And so one and these are going to come up throughout the day today. So these, if you want, putting down two points here, they are right at the beginning. Okay, one, the purpose of the gifts is always to bear witness to Jesus. That's the gospel message, who Jesus is and what he did. One, the gifts are given to bear witness to Jesus. And two, to build up the church. We saw that in 1 Corinthians 14. Over and over and over, Paul says, to build up the church, to build up the church, to build up the church. And I think that umbrella kind of covers a lot of those other things we talked about. The purpose of the Holy Spirit, why Jesus sent him, is to comfort, to teach us, to remind us what Jesus said, to convict, right? John 16, to convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment, to give us boldness. We'll see that in the book of Acts. And then it's all done in love. And that's that famous love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. You can, all these gifts that the Corinthian church had, and yet they got, they went off and were abusing them. Why? Because it wasn't, they were the noisy gong, it says in 1 Corinthians 13, right? Because they weren't being exercised in the fruit of the Spirit. And so that's what we talked about. And in that, that few weeks ago when I, we, we did that sermon, um, I missed one slide. And it's the one I usually have up there about being doers of the word, not just hearers. And I remember sitting back down, I'm thinking, I feel like I missed something. And then we got to the end, and I prayed and sat down, and, and, uh, and that was it. We forgot. And so this morning, I wasn't planning to do another one on the Holy Spirit, but uh, I wanted to come back. This morning is basically that. It's just application. How do we then step into it? I hope now we're informed. We're no longer uninformed about the spiritual gifts, but we want to be doers, right? We want to receive that gift. We want to practice that gift. We don't just want to hear and understand it. We want to be doers of them. And so that's what this morning is all about. It's going to be very application. So here was that slide that I should have showed a couple weeks ago. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good, 1 Corinthians 12, 7. So with yourselves, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. There's a couple other verses in that whole section there about desire. It says to desire the spiritual gifts, okay? And so there's some things. And so this, this word manifestation, I can kind of maybe scare, scare off. That's, that's not talking about like, or not just talking about some spirit revealing himself like we see in the scriptures, tongues of fire or something like that. When you see the word manifestation, it simply means 
revealed. You know, it's evident, right? And so when it's saying that to each one is given a manifestation, it's just that there is the, the gift of the Holy Spirit is evident in your life. People can see it. In other words, you're doing it, and people notice, right? You're exercising your gifts. And same thing with the, we're e- they're, they're eager for manifestations. That's just simply to see the Holy Spirit working through you, okay? And so think of that. And so that's our desire. We want to not just be informed about the spiritual gifts this morning. This morning we want to take a step towards having those be evident, working those out in our lives. And so that's what we're going to be looking at this morning. Um, and so the first, how we're going to do it, we're going to go through three different passages in the... In, um, the Bible. There isn't one. When I came to you, brothers, did not come to you proclaiming the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. Now, Paul could have done that. He was the top student of the top Pharisee in all of Israel. Okay, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. He could have come with lofty speech and wisdom. But listen, for I decided, but he chose, I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified, basically the gospel. Okay, and I was with you in weakness, in fear, in much trembling. Why? And my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Why? So that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And so that's the other reason. That's that bearing witness to Jesus. Why I want us to, as a church, why I think God has us to step into and let's, let's grow in the gifts that the Holy Spirit wants to give us. Why? Because it is a witness to Jesus. When the people see God at work in power, things that can't be explained just by human ways, right? When God sees this, this God's gifting and the Holy Spirit at work, that power, it, it's, it makes that salvation real, right? They see, they go, there's something about the, the, God's real. Jesus is real. You know, it draws them to that. And so that's the other reason why we want to be a church that practices and that grows in these things. And so with that, here are, here's the definition, here's the criteria for a gift of the Holy Spirit. So first off, like we just read, does it bear witness to Jesus, right? The scriptures are clear. Jesus said, I'm going to send the, the Holy Spirit. He will testify about me, he will remind you of what I've said. He will teach you, right? All these things, he will, or it's glory to God, that would be another one. He, he always points to God, glorifies God. So the work of the Holy Spirit, the first one, we know that the gifts are given. One of the criteria is that it will bear witness to Jesus. The second one is that it's going to build up the church. It's not going to divide. It's not going to tear down. It's going to be for the building up of the church. It's another one of the criteria why the Holy Spirit gives a gift. And then lastly, it's done in love, or I would expand it to the whole fruit of the Holy Spirit. And so if you want to identify what is a gift of the Holy Spirit, it is when it's, when you, how do you identify it? When you see it fostering this fruit of the Holy Spirit, love and joy and peace and patience and goodness and kindness, right? That's how it's expressed. Those are gifts of the Holy Spirit. So if it meets that criteria, then it's a gift of the Holy Spirit okay? And then now we're going to go into these three different passages. They kind of give some examples, but we need to understand the list, right? That that's what a gift of the Holy Spirit is when it meets those. And so we're going to go through, it's really practical this morning, we're going to go through these three passages. The first one is the one we looked at a couple weeks ago. We're going to look at it again, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 to 11. Um, So you can turn there if you'd like, because we're going to spend a little bit of time there, 1 Corinthians 12. Um, And what I'd like you to do as we go through this, to be looking, um, what are the gifts that you think God has given you? Or what are the ones, maybe you know some of your gifts, right? How can we grow in those? That's the goal this morning. So as we go through these, we're going to be looking for what it maybe is that God has given you. And how do we then exercise that for bearing witness to Jesus, for the building up of the body? Um, So it says this. 1 Corinthians 12, starting at verse 8. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. So first one is wisdom. And I I explained last time that that wisdom, or easy definition for wisdom, is simply knowledge applied. Okay? And, And so wisdom is the ability to take God's truth and apply it to a situation. And so maybe, is there anybody here that you just seem to be the one that people come to for advice? You just seem to be the one that people seek after. They're going through something and they're looking for some direction. They want someone to talk to. And so they go to you because you have the ability to take the truth of God's word and apply it, help them apply it to a particular situation. That's the gift of wisdom. 
okay? And so how do you exercise that? If that's you, if you're someone that people come to, I would say, first off, simply, do you ask God to give you that wisdom? So when someone comes to you in a situation, you're looking to give, help them understand, apply God's truth to their situation, stop and pray. God, give me wisdom. You know, the book of James promises that if you ask for God's wisdom, he will give it. It's a promise. And so stop and pray, or do you just kind of do it out of your own, what you think, right? Pause. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. You want him to work. Pause. What is it? How do we want to, how can I help? And then speak that as best you can. Apply God's word to their situation. The gift of wisdom. Second one, into another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit. So this one, now we talked about knowledge, is just obviously we know what knowledge is, it's acquiring information, you're able to, maybe you, if you're here and you're able to understand information, uh, lots of information, retain it, articulate it, help other people understand it, right? They would kind of go alongside a teaching gift. So there's that aspect of a, of a gift of knowledge, okay, that some of you have, and you can think of ways of how you could exercise that and help people understand things. We'll get to the teaching gift in a bit. But the other one here with the, with the gift of knowledge is that Another way the Holy Spirit does this is he can give us knowledge of something that we didn't know. And so I think of a, a story of a really good friend of mine. His grandma was, uh, just woke up, and she just instantly knew that her neighbor had fallen down and couldn't get up. She just knew it. And uh, she got up, she went over to her neighbor's house, and that's exactly what happened. She was able to call the... And so just a, a supernatural God just gives you a knowledge. Now that's a very amazing one, right? Like that's a, but it could be somewhere in there where you just, God's giving you something. You think, everybody ever had the like, I think something's going on with that person. I just feel like there's something, God seems to be saying there's something, maybe they put the face on, they got the mask on, they're trying to hide it, but you're, you just, something in you went, man, there's something there. And so you don't have a, a right, but you, it's enough for you to go, to be prompted to go and to find out and to care. Are you okay? Is there something going on? Is there something I can help you with, right? Things you wouldn't have known, but God gives you a knowledge utterance of knowledge. To another, third one, faith, or that word could be faithfulness, translated faithfulness by the same spirit. This one I like too, this was just simply that person, who knows that person, you just think of the person that has, that you know that has, you would say has a strong faith, that person you just admire for, they just seem to have just a rock solid faith. You think of that person, who would you think of, right? We need those people, right? Some people just seem to have this gift that it doesn't matter what they're going through. It doesn't matter what world throws at them. They're just steadfast. They're just rock solid, right? Their faithfulness is an example, and they help us. For those of us that, that struggle with being torn, thrown to and fro, tossed to and fro, right? That, that having somebody who just has that strong faith, no matter what, right, that you can go to, it's a gift. It's a gift. So how can you then leverage that? If that's you, that just seems to come easy. Things don't shake you easily. How can you then use that to build up the body? How can you help those that do seem to be tossed to and fro or that struggle with doubt in that? How can you come alongside them? How can you bear witness to Jesus through your strong faith? To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. I remember we talked about this a few weeks ago. and We said some people here had experienced miraculous healing. People have been prayed for and they've been healed instantly. It's amazing. God heals in all kinds of ways. He heals through the medical system. He heals through common grace. He sometimes waits until glory. We don't get fully healed until glory. But he also still sometimes in his sovereignty chooses to heal instantly. And he does that through people. And so some people, this gift of healing, it doesn't mean that you all of a sudden have the ability to just go around and heal at will. No, it's still the Holy Spirit, the one that is doing the work, right? But God works through people, right? And so some people have a gift of healing. And so if that's you, I don't know, I, wouldn't it be great if we had some people here that God just gave that gift to? Amen? Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. And uh, I would love to see that. And so for you, like, what is it? How do you, what do we do? What's the applicable step? How do we step into application with that? And so for all, any one of these gifts, whichever one maybe you resonate with or wonder about, I would encourage you to do a study. There's so much in the scriptures on that. So if that's you, you're curious, you're wondering, I would say do your own study, right? You do it in community, have somebody that maybe you know, will come alongside you, but do a study on the gift of healing. Look at how it's given and how it's used and, and all, all the, everything goes around it, right? Do your study. Seek the Lord on it, right? Because it's a gift. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit for building up the body 
and bearing witness to Jesus. And we see this in the book of Acts, don't we? All these gifts, we see them throughout the book of Acts right from the beginning. We'll see these. I'll get to that in a minute. To another, the ability... Oh, I missed one. Gifts of healing. To another, working of miracles. That would just be other incredible signs and wonders. I think of Acts 4.31 where they pray, God, the Holy Spirit, give us boldness while you stretch out your hand in signs and wonders. Right? And... And so there's this thing that just kind of covers all the other miraculous things. The Holy Spirit can still do miracles, can he? Amen. Amen. To another working of miracles, to another prophecy. To another prophecy. So I want to take a couple minutes on this one. Um, I think this is one that we can really be applicable to us as a church. And so I, I kind of shared this last time too, but prophecy, the, the word simply means to speak forth. And when it's, it's divine prophecy, it's godly prophecy, biblical prophecy, it's to speak forth something from God. Okay, that's what the word just literally means. And so there's kind of two, two areas. One is what I'm doing this morning. And I've shared before with you my every time when I sit down to prepare a sermon, I ask the same question, Lord, what do you want to say from your word to your people? That is speaking forth God's word, right? Now, I have God's word, right? We have the Bible. We have his completed word. And so I am taking that. But it's not that, but there's still a seeking where I go, it's a big book, right? So it's, God, what do you want to say right now to your people in our context where we're at? What do you want to say? And I need to stop and, and seek that, right? And so that would be one form, would just be, and for you, maybe that's your devotions as a family. Then instead of just kind of just going through, okay, what are we at today? When, you know, to stop and go, Lord, where are we as a family? What are you looking to say to us? What are you trying to say to us as a family? You know, what can, from your word, and pray and listen, and then, and then go forward with your family, or maybe you're in a Bible study, or wherever, whatever your context might be. So there'd be that form. The other one would be um, the speaking a word from God to somebody. And, and so this is where, um, okay, we want to define the ditches, okay? You can know that analogy. So, right, we don't, the one ditch is the, the Old Testament prophet, okay? The thus saith the Lord, mouthpiece for God to the entire nation. I'm going to say no, okay? So don't go into that ditch, right? And then the other one is, Nah, there is nothing. God doesn't speak through us anymore or anything like that, right? Ditch, other, other ditch, right? But in the middle, not in one of the ditches, we have just simply, if I could just, we, I think we could all relate to this, is just God speaks through us to other people, or God uses other people to speak to us. Isn't, isn't that true? Anybody ever had somebody just share a verse with them? Just you got a text or something, a quick email, someone sent a verse, and it was just perfect for what you're going through. Anybody? Yeah, look at all those hands. You know what I mean? That's God speaking through someone to you, right? That's what that is. And, and whether it's that, whether it's just a quick encouraging text, a comforting thing, something like that, and this is one that I think we can grow in. We can all exercise. Actually, from 1 Corinthians 14 there, that it specifically says, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially prophecy, okay? As a body, for what purpose? For the building up of the church, that we would be allowing God to speak through us to one another to build one another up, right? And so what does that look like? How can you, you can just ask yourself, how can you allow God to speak through you to someone else, to build them up, to comfort them, to, to, to bear witness to Jesus, maybe? Maybe they're not a believer. And so I think it just simply starts with you have to ask. I found one of the great ways to do it is if you have a prayer list for the, I hope you do. If not, I encourage you to have a prayer list of people you're praying for. As you go down that prayer list, you're praying for them, just ask, Lord, is there anything you, you want me to say to them? Is there anything that you want me to, to reach out? Is there something? And, and I've just found it often. I'll go through and then there'll be a name and there'll be something. I'll just, I think, I feel like there's something there. They were going through. There was just something. Maybe they didn't even have to say it, but I just, there was something I saw maybe at, at church or something. I just, it, sometimes it's just as simple as a text of, hey, how you doing? Just checking in, you know, how are you doing about this? How are you doing about that? Maybe it's, it's you know they're going through something, then pause and go, Lord, give me a verse. Just pause and listen. Is there any scripture? Is there something that you want me to pass on to them that would be an encouragement for them right now? Right? And so then you listen and you find that verse and you send that. You know, hey, just thought this would encourage you. Whatever you're going through, right? That's how God can speak through us to other people. Amen. And then, of course, 
again, the guards for this is that, that we put it through that filter again, right? Obviously, it will never contradict Scripture because the Scripture is, whole, is inspired by the Holy Spirit. He's not going to contradict himself. So it's going to align with Scripture, right? That's why it's great if, I would say, every time you, someone is, God puts someone on your mind, I would say, ask that question, is there a verse, right? That's a great thing to do, right? You're never going to go wrong, <laughs> for sure, that's for sure, right? And so it's going to align with Scripture, and then put it through and say, is it going to bear witness? Is it going to bring glory to God? Is it going to bear witness to Jesus, right? Yes. And then, is it going to comfort? Is it going to build up, right? And then, check your own heart, your motivation. What's your motivation? Does it, is it out of the fruit of the Spirit? Are you, are you doing it out of, truly out of love, right? Is that why you're looking to share it? right? Not for your own glory, not to look at it, not because you're upset or something, right? But are you doing it out of love? And then how you do it, are you doing it with kindness and goodness and patience and self-control, right? There's your filter. And then I would say, let's do it. Encourage one another in that way. Prophecy to another, the ability to distinguish between spirits. And, uh, this one, I just think this is so applicable to us today. We are bombarded by messaging from every side, aren't we? From phones to internet to media to TV to, I mean, we are just constantly bombarded by messaging. And, and we need to be able to distinguish what's from God. What do we need to be wary of? And some people, is anybody here, you just got this, a great sense. You're just able to kind of see and, and identify where there's just something not right with that right? Because the devil's a deceiver, isn't he? He often doesn't come out black and white. You know, there's those ones too. Those are obvious. I would hope we all recognize those, right? But he can be deceitful. And so there's some of you that have this gift of being able to discern. Because he is tricky. I thought of this one when, when uh, um, Amanda and I were youth leaders, I'd probably be eight, nine years ago. But that movie Noah came out. It was like a Hollywood blockbuster, like a big... You guys, everybody remember that one with the rock people? That'll help jog some memory right? And I just remember it was promoted by every, like, not every, but a ton of big Christian organizations were promoting it. It was getting all this promotion because it was a Hollywood production of a Bible story, right? And so it got all this promotion, and there people were like, Amanda, Mike, you guys should take the youth to see it. You know, what a great youth man. And so Amanda and I were like, definitely going to preview that first. So we went and watched it, and, and it was like, I couldn't believe even, even I'd heard, I'd looked up online some of the, and the debates were mostly the standard one, which is like, well, it's not perfectly biblically accurate. It's a movie, and there's that debate that goes on. That wasn't what bothered me, okay? That's a whole different discussion. What bothered me is that the underlying message of the entire movie was exactly contrary to the biblical one. Exactly contrary to it. It wasn't man made in God's image, that, that message of redemption. It was man's the problem, and we messed it all up. And it'd be better if we just weren't around. That was kind of the message of the movie. And I just thought, how deceitful. You know, you stick a Bible name on it, right? Being able to recognize those things and guard us as a body, we need that. Um, but again, how we then go about that through the filter of the, of the fruits of the Spirit, right? Please be, don't, don't, don't go online and be the angry basher, okay? That doesn't make us look good, right? According to the fruit of the Spirit is how we then the how we go about using that gift, if you have that gift. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Uh, oh, sorry. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. And so, this one, um, I, I don't know where um, you're at. Some of you here um, pray in tongues, speak in tongues. Some of you are really apprehensive about even the idea of tongues. We got the full spectrum, okay? Um, and so, my encouragement to you would be simply this. Go read 1 Corinthians 14, okay? 1 Corinthians 14, because here's the things that we can say for sure, okay? It is a gift from the Holy Spirit. That we know for sure, right? And the right one, the right done rightly. <laughs> um, and it, it, that chapter ends with, do not forbid speaking in tongues. That's how the whole chapter ends, right? And so we, don't, we want to be obedient to that. Um, we see, you put it through the filter, read that chapter, right, wherever you're at, even just to inform yourself, right, um, and, and we see the example, put it through that same filter of, does it build up the church, does it bear witness to Jesus, right, put it through that same filter, and that's what we see in the book of Acts, isn't it, 
we see the Holy Spirit comes, they speak in tongues. In this case, it was earthly languages in, in Acts chapter 2, right? They speak in earthly languages. They start praising God in all these different languages. Literally, he's just, you know, Acts 1-8 has just happened. Be my witnesses to all the nations. Literally, all the nations in Jerusalem gather because they hear God being praised in their own tongue, right? They all gather. Peter preaches a sermon, shares the gospel of Jesus, 3,000 people saved, right? There's a perfect example of the Holy Spirit giving a gift for his purpose. And it also did the building up, uniting thing, because that, that sign would become one that would, God would use a couple times in the book of Acts to confirm that the Holy Spirit had been given to a new people, Samaritans and the Gentiles. He'd do it again, right? And so he does both. So there's a great example of a gift, in that case, the gift of tongues being given for that exact purpose the Holy Spirit had. And so does he still work in that way? Yes. And so wherever you are on that spectrum, um, go read 1 Corinthians 14. It will help you. And, uh, and we'll see, again, what the Holy Spirit does. He's the one that does the work. And uh, I think I, I mentioned the story of Max Licato there. So the pink sheet at the back has got the link to it. But I just thought that was kind of a neat story, kind of on that line. A guy who had never spoken in tongues for 40-something years of ministry, faithfully served the Lord, and then just in his own devotional time, private devotional time, he said, Lord, I'll just take whatever gift, I just want to give, take whatever you are willing to give me. And it was like two, three weeks later, in his own private devotional time, he spoke in tongues, prayed in tongues. And uh, no one's ever heard it. He said, it's just been a thing God gave me at this stage in my life, <laughs> you know. I don't know, God chose to. And he just, all he did was just humbly position himself before the Lord to give whatever the Lord wants to give. Then the next one, this is from verse 28. Verse 28, Paul reiterates a bunch of the gifts, but then he adds two more here, and I love this. Verse 28, then gifts of healing. We've talked about that already. And then helping, the gift of helping. And, uh, and I, just, I just love this one because how, how many of you just like to help people and it comes easy? Oh, that's great. There's a lot of hands. I just love that. And, and, but those same people that put their hand up, how many of you right now are thinking, is that really a gift? Like, I don't know, I just, if someone needs help, I help them. I mean, is it really that, is that really a gift of the Holy Spirit? Right? Well, I want to encourage you. So for everybody else that didn't put up your hand, how many of you look at those people that just seem always happy to help and go, man, that's a gift? Right? Yeah, look at all those hands, see? <laughs> I'm serious. It is a gift from God. It is a gift from God. Some people are just, they just love to help. They're good at helping. And, uh, and it is a gift. Trust me, it is a gift. And so how do you step into that one? Well, you help, right? Continue to do that. Encourage the rest of us to do it too. And then lastly, administrating. It's another one kind of like helping. It's one that some of you just seem to have that gift. You're just really good at administrating. And uh, yeah, my wife, Amanda, is a great administrator. Uh, Heidi, thank you for all your using your gift in your way. A number of you have that gift of administrating. And it's one of those ones, again, I think often it gets downplayed, which is why I think in it's exactly why Paul uses at the end of that, if you go read the verses in context, he's just got finished rebuking the Corinthian church for kind of going like, ooh, this one's all special, and that one, yeah, yeah, right? And he's like, no, these are, these are all gifts. They're all parts of the body. The body needs them all. The gift of administration. Um, and so that is Corinthians. Um, the next passage that goes through some adds a few more gifts is chapter is Romans chapter 12 so you can turn there if you'd like Romans chapter 12 starting at verse 5 and in this one not only is he going to list a few more gifts in this the context of this passage is he's trying to encourage the church to actually exercise their gifts just like we're doing this morning and so he's going to add a little bit not only does he list a gift he kind of gives us some how to do it okay so we though many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another I included that verse here just because it's just a reminder. If you go look in the scriptures, almost every time where there's a gift, it always, the context will be in the context of the body because we're to use the gifts to build up the body. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. And it seems obvious, doesn't it? But a first step for us to actually be doers of the word and not just saying, hey, I was praying for you. I feel like God wanted me to reach out. I don't know what you're going through, but just uh, this verse came to mind. Uh, maybe it'll be a comfort to you. I just wanted to share it with you. If there's anything I can do, you know, that's in proportion to our faith. <clears throat> if service, I like this, if service in our serving, 
And so he's trying to get the church to, to exercise their gifts. He's okay, if your gift is service, what do you need to do? Serve, yes. Yeah. If your gift is teaching, teach. If it's exhorting, then exhort, right? Some of these things, we just need to step into it. And I will say too, though, that that doesn't mean that you, this, don't take this morning as like, you now, this is a guilt trip or something, and I'm looking for you to, to, you have to serve in every possible way where you have any kind of gift. That's not it. You have to, there's only so many hours in a week, right? And I believe that God will lead you if you earnestly seek and say, Lord, where do you want me to serve? Where do you, you've given me this gift for the upbuilding of the body, for the bear, in order to bear witness to Jesus. Where do you want me to use it? How can I use this gift? Why did you give it to me? You obviously gave it to me for a purpose. I just want to exercise it. Show me. And I believe that he will show you where the right place is for you to use that gift. The one who contributes in generosity, like that, because again, remember, it's the purpose, right? The goal isn't just the the thing that you were generous giving towards to, but it's greater than that. It's that that act would result in building up the church. That act would bear witness to Jesus. And so we do it with generosity. We do it cheerfully, we'll see in a bit, right? Because those are some of the attitude and how we, we go about being generous. If you have that gift of generosity, is going to be one of the things that, that has the greater impact. I had a, an uncle that uh, he passed away from cancer during COVID there, actually, but he just had this gift of generosity. He was just known for being so generous. You couldn't go to his house without him giving you a gift, like every time. And uh, I got a lot of pocket knives from Uncle Joe, and, uh, <laughs> which I'm grateful. And, uh, but um, just an incredibly generous man. But everybody knew, and he had a lot of, he worked at Honda, had a lot of non-Christian friends and colleagues and that. Great guy, everybody loved him kind of guy. Um, but you always knew it wasn't just that he was generous and gave you something. You, he made it clear is because he loved Jesus and he wanted you to love Jesus too. It was just so clear, everything. You couldn't get it. You couldn't spend time with him without that coming through. And that's that greater. That's what I think of when I think do it with generosity is that there's a greater purpose that God has in this gift that he's given you. To the one who leads with zeal. And some of you are gifted leaders. And when I saw that with zeal, I, I can relate to this one a little bit. I, I think there's two things that can happen when we lead, two errors. One is we can get worn out, burnt out, and tired, right? And and to lead with zeal, and so the encouragement is that, and we're going to see it in actually the next passage we look at, is that we have to remember that it's the Holy Spirit who gave that gift, who put you in that place, and he's the one that gives you the strength. And when we start relying on our own strength to lead, that's when we get burnt out and, and that, right? It's when we, we did try to do things because, well, no one else will do it, or because, oh, I want everyone to see me and think of something, right? We can we can get into trouble and get ourselves and to be exhausted because we're serving in a way that God didn't call us to, right? But when we are serving by the strength that he gives in the place where he's called us to, I promise you, you'll have the strength. doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but he will give you the strength. And so that's one error is the exhaustion. The other one is the pride, right? That position of leadership can often get pumped up and built up and we can start to think that we're the good ones, we're the great ones, when, and forget that it was the Holy Spirit that put us there and he's the one that gave that gift. And so that's the other guard there is that we always, our zeal is for the Lord. It's for, we, we don't forget that purpose, who gave us the gift and that the purpose is for him to be glorified and for the building up of his church. And then lastly, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And I just want to thank those of you that just have a heart for the least of these, you know, and you're able to show mercy and just um, tender hearts. And I just thank you, and yet you do it with a smile on your face. It's a wonderful thing. Let love be genuine. I just put that in verse 9a, the start of that verse, because once again, sandwiched in there, it's for the gifts are for the body, and they're all done in love. And then the last one we'll look at this morning, First Peter chapter 4, this is what Lloyd read Thank you, Lloyd. <clears throat> and it's just a perfect summary of what we've talked about today. <clears throat> Above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. As we step into this church, as we look to exercise and practice the gifts that God has given us, this needs to be our our rule, our guide. 
that it's all done in love, that we earnestly desire to love one another because there's it could create conflict it could create issues that happens when you get a bunch of sinful people together right and so what's the answer love it covers a multitude of sins show hospitality to one another without grumbling hospitality is a gift right fellowship and have joy together and in the bible talks about showing hospitality to strangers Um, it's a gift as each one has received a gift in 1 Corinthians 12, there, that first verse we read made it clear that every single one has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So we've each been given a gift. Let's, when we use it, it, it's by God's grace, that, first of all, that we're given a gift, right? It, it's, it's, he's the one who gives the gift. It's his grace that's it, why we have it. So then we need to be good stewards of that. I think of that parable in Matthew 25 where Jesus gives the talents out to the different, the different amounts of talents to the servants. Um, that time it was a time of money. It's kind of funny. It parallels the English word talents, kind of like gifts. Um, but he gives those out and two of the servants do a good job. They go, they work hard at it. They invest it. They use their talents for the good of their master and it grows and he comes back, well done, good and faithful servant. But then there's the one servant who receives this gift and he just buries it in the ground. He doesn't use it right? And Jesus comes back, he says, you wicked servant, right? I gave you a gift and you never used it. Use the gifts, be good stewards of what God has given us. And then he gives these examples, whoever speaks is one who speaks the oracles of God. If you're involved in any kind of teaching or anything like that, take it seriously. It's God's word, study it, understand it, be passionate about sharing it. Whoever serves is one who serves by the strength that God supplies. That's what I was just mentioning before, that we need to rely on his strength. Don't forget that. Don't rely on your own. You'll be burnt out in no time. In order, actually, I'm going to get, why don't we all read this together? You see the screen? Read what's in yellow there. Let's read it together. In order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And that's the goal. That, again, is the the guard, the filter, the purpose of it all. And so for this week, what does it look like to be a doer of the word? I'll skip that one. To be a doer of the word this week, this is from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 12 to 16. Here Paul is talking specifically to Timothy and his gifts, but you can apply it to your gift. Listen to this. Let no one despise you for your youth. I'll just say let no one despise you. But set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, right? So first step is our character. We want to be more like Jesus. We make an effort to, uh, to work on that character, the focus on the fruits of the Spirit. That's the call on all Christians is to grow in the fruit of the Spirit. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, and to teaching. Now that was Timmy's, Timothy's specific gift. You can substitute in yours there, whatever is the gift that God has given you. Devote yourself to it. Do not neglect the gift that you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Don't neglect the gift that you have. You have a gift. Don't neglect it. How do we not neglect it? Verse 15, practice these things. Immerse yourself in them. Practice it. Take a step this week. Whatever the gift is or the gifts that God has given you, take a step to immerse yourself, to practice it. Start asking just the Lord, Lord, you give me this gift, how can I exercise it? How do you want to use it to build up the body and to bear witness to Jesus? And then lastly, keep a close watch on yourself and on your teaching or on whatever the gift is that you have. Persist in it. Keep a close watch. Keep a close watch. And this means that as we as a body look to exercise the gifts that God has given us among us, we keep a watch. Is it fulfilling what the Holy Spirit gave it to us for? Is it building up? Is it bearing witness to Jesus? Is it bringing glory to God? Is it comforting people, right? We keep a watch on that because we can get deceived real easy and it can, can start to become about us and it can grow in pride or it can start to divide or create conflict. And we need to keep watch for that, right? And recognize that's not from the Holy Spirit. His desire is to build up and do it all in love. Persist in this, don't give up. For by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. That would be for Timothy and his gifting. I would say for whatever it is, the one, it will fulfill what the Holy Spirit, why he gave you the gift. It will bear witness to Jesus and it will build up the church. Amen. Let's pray. 
Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you give. We want to receive those gifts. You promise that you have given each one of us a gift to be used for your glory, to be used to build up the church. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would help us to slow down and to listen. We live in such a culture of so much distraction. Lord, might we take the time just to stop and to listen and to ask, Lord, is there anybody that you want us to minister to by the gift that you've given us in some way? Use us, we pray, to build one another up to be your hands and feet, Jesus, to this body. And then, Lord, it is a body for us to go out and to be a witness for you, Jesus. That, that as we have, the people that you've put in our lives, that we would be listening to you, Holy Spirit. Is there, what, what would you have us say? What would you have us do that would point them to the life-giving relationship they can have with you, Jesus? pray. We thank you again for the blessings that you pour out on us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for all that you are doing. We pray more, Lord, more. We pray that you would do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine.